Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail route learning series after a five month hiatus. I am pleased to say now that PTG Rail is back in business and I'm once again back to recording route learning videos and hopefully other documentary videos for this channel. So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Medway Valley Line, which was released a couple of months back by Dovetail Games. I'm going to be driving a full run of this route in a custom-created scenario, following the real-life timetable of train 2 Tango 62, which is the 1934 Southeastern service from Strood through to Tombridge, for a total journey distance of around 26 and a half miles. We will be calling at every station along the way, and so our stops include Cuxton, Halling, Snodland, New Hythe, Aylesford, Maidstone Barracks, Maidstone West, East Farley, Wateringbury, Yolding, Beltring, Paddock Wood, and finally Tombridge. The train that I'm driving on this journey today is a Class 375 electric multiple unit, which was built by Bombardier Transportation at Derby Lit Church Lane Works between 1999 and 2005. It is part of the Electrostar family of electric multiple units, and the Class 375s have been in service since April 2001. A total of 140 Class 375 Electrostar units were built, with 112 units currently in service, and 28 of them converted to Class 377s. So the unit that I'm driving is actually the Class 375-3 subclass, which is formed of three coaches per unit, and has a maximum capacity of seated passengers of 176. The maximum speed of these trains is 100 miles per hour, though I'm not going to be able to get up to 100 on this journey today. In fact, the uh, maximum speed limit for most of the journey will be around 70 miles per hour. The weight of the Class 375-3 units is just over 133 metric tons, and they have a power output of 1 megawatt, or 1,300 horsepower. The unit operates on the 750 volt DC third rail electrification system. Now in the cab of the train, there's just a couple of things that I need to do to set up ready for departure. So the first thing I'm going to do is press H to put the headlights into the daytime position. Now that I've done that, I'm going to move the reversing handle with the W key to the forward position. And then I just reset the AWS self-test sequence there with the Q key. Now, just to quickly go through some of the cab controls here, in front of me you can see the combined traction and brake controller currently at the number two with the black dot next to it, which indicates that the brakes are currently in step two. So we've got a standard West Code three-step brake built into this unit with steps one, two, three, and then a final step, which is the emergency position. As you pull the handle towards you to the off position, the brakes are then fully released, but equally you've got no power, so that's the coasting position. And then above that, you've got four steps of power. And so now if we continue around the cab here, you can see in front of us that I've got the speedometer which is measured in miles per hour, and you can see there's a little red bug on the outside of the speedometer there, uh, which indicates the speed set position. So if I was to turn the speed set on, then this would act like a cruise control system. But in reality, from what I understand, Southeastern drivers do not use the um, speed set on these units. So I'm going to be maintaining all of these speeds manually on this journey today. If we now continue around the cab, you can see there that we've got the brake gauges next to the speedometer. And you can see there's two needles there. The needle on the right is the one that we're most interested in, which is the brake cylinder pressure gauge so when that needle is pointing to zero then the brakes are fully released and then the harder the brakes are applied then the higher the number will read if we now continue further around the cab here, the final control that we really need to talk about there is the horn, which is a two-tone horn controllable with the spacebar and the B key. 
Generally, I'm only going to use one tone of the horn on this journey, which is what you hear drivers uh, normally do in reality. I believe that's because people have a habit of moving next to railways and then complaining about the amount of noise that the railway makes. And so train drivers these days tend to use only one tone of the horn instead of two. The next thing I'm going to do now is open the windows, which just improves the sound, especially with the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed, um, so that um, you will hear the air rushing past, then you'll also hear the traction motors much more clearly. One final thing to mention about the horn is that there are a number of uh, whistle boards along this route, and I quite often miss one or two from looking at my notes or something like that, so if I do miss some of the whistle boards or I just forget to sound the horn, then please do forgive me as this is a mistake that I quite often make. So now let's take another look outside the train and then depart and head out towards Tunbridge. Departing away from Strood, the starting speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, with around two and one third miles to go to our first stop at Cuxton Station. So now I've reached 15 miles per hour, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast until we can accelerate further. Immediately diverging to the left at Strood Station uh, is the line towards the Chatham Main Line, which we are now passing under here at Rochester Bridge Junction. And if you go in the opposite direction um, from the way that we're going now, so the way that we've just come from, then you actually join the North Kent Line, which is used by high-speed services towards Ebbsfleet and London St Pancras, as well as local services towards towards uh, London Charing Cross. But I believe that is all in fact changing uh, with the new timetable that's just uh, come into force. So just after crossing the junction there, the speed limit went up to 45 and then 70 miles per hour. And I was able to start accelerating just as we reached that speed post that we passed a moment ago. Just to our left at this point is the River Medway, which is uh, the river that we're going to be following for most of this journey, um, the river um, which this line is named after. I'm now going to accelerate up to 70 miles per hour, and then once we reach 70 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power to allow the train to coast until we need to apply the brakes for the first stop. So I've now idled the power at this point. Once we've reached 70 miles per hour, I know that we've then got around one mile to go to our stop. We're now coming up on the Medway Viaduct, where we pass under the M2 motorway, and also High Speed 1 from Ebbsfleet down towards Ashford International and the Channel Tunnel. So at this point, we've now got around two thirds of a mile to go, and I'm going to apply the brakes for Cuxton Station as we reach the next small yellow mile post just on the left-hand side. So we've just reached that mile post now. I'm now going to apply the brakes for our stop. Up to step two, though um, I might actually be braking slightly too hard here. So I will re reduce the braking in a moment if necessary. down to step one of braking you can see the platform coming up just ahead and here at Cuxton station I need to stop at the end of the platform I 
definitely brake slightly too early there, so I've just released the brakes momentarily. Now let's reapply it as we're entering the platform here. And so this should now be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Cuxton, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, and we've got around one and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Halling. W post just there, we've got just over one mile to go, and I'm going to idle the power now as we pass this signal, which is a distant signal. I'm now looking out for uh, some sort of factory on the left hand side, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. And then just as we pass the factory, there are some overgrown sidings there called rugby sidings. And so I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop just as we reach the overgrown sidings. see the sidings just there on the left hand side so I've now got the brakes on for Halling station initially step one though it looks like the platforms are coming up a bit quicker than I anticipated so I've now gone up to step two of braking which should bring our speed down quite nicely here at Halling station I need to stop at the S sign which is at the end of the platform just fanning the brakes there a little and now I'm just slowing down slightly too quickly so I've just released momentarily now let's reapply and you can see the S just coming up there on the left hand side and so this should be about the right place to stop Departing away from Halling, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, and we've got around one and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Snotland. You may notice that throughout this video I've been experimenting a little bit with camera angles and uh, ways to try and improve the video really and include more external shots uh, without detracting from the overall roots learning experience. So I'd love to know what you think of the way that I'm editing this video. Uh, please do let me know in the comments uh, if you'd like to see more of this in future root learning videos because I do think it adds just a bit more interest if I can include a few external shots where possible. At this point, now we've reached this signal here, we've got just over one mile to go to Snodland. As we reach 65 miles per hour, I'm then going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop at the next AWS ramp.
just reached the AWS ramp there and I put on the brakes just a little bit before we crossed over it and that should hopefully be about the correct braking point. I was having slight difficulty working out the braking point for this stop earlier. In fact, I'm going to have to apply the brakes up to step three just momentarily and now back down to step two again. wouldn't normally use step three of braking. Um, I really do need to try and work on uh, my braking point for Snodland Station. I should have braked just a few seconds earlier. So as you can see here, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Departing away from Snodland, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, with around one and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is New Hythe. this signal we've got just over three quarters of a mile to go. So we've just past two uh, W boards there at the second one we've got just over half a mile to go to our stop. Now I'm just going to start applying the brakes as we enter this left-hand curve here. So this brakes slightly early and now it's up to step two of braking. We've now got a warning for um, an upcoming speed limit reduction which comes into force after our next stop. So the warning there was for an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. Here at New Hythe Station, I need to aim to stop at the three and four coach stop sign, which is around halfway along the platform. I can just see it coming up on the left hand side there. So you do need to make sure that you're entering this platform slower than maybe some of the others to make sure that you're going to stop in the right place. As I was finding early on practice runs, it's actually quite easy to overshoot this stopping point. And this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from New Hythe, the speed limit is currently 60 miles per hour. In fact, a 60 mile per hour speed restriction came into force just before the station, which I should have mentioned a moment ago. And the speed limit will shortly be dropping to 40 miles per hour, with just under one mile to go to our next stop, which is Aylesford. So I'm now just going to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour, and then once we've reached around 50 or just below, I'm going to idle the power and just allow the train to coast. And I'm going to start slowing down for um, the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction as soon as I can see the speed post ahead. I can just see the speed post coming up now, so just a step one brake application there should bring our speed down nicely in time for the 40 limit. And so now I'm just going to allow the train to coast at 40 miles per hour, and I'm going to brake for our stop around the area of the next AWS ramp. Mm. 
here at Aylesford Station, I need to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. Brakes slightly harder than I needed to there, so I'm just going to coast just for a moment, just until we get a bit closer to the sign there. So this should be just about the right place to stop. Departing Aylesford, the speed limit is currently 40 miles per hour, with just over 3 miles to go to our next stop, which is Maidstone Barracks. reducing the power now as we approach 40 miles per hour and I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast and will give us one notch of power if necessary if we lose too much speed. So just losing a little bit of speed there so I've just gone up to notch one of power to bring us back up towards 40 and then in a moment the speed limit will be increasing back up to 70 miles per hour. past the 70 mile per hour speed post there, and we should now be clear to accelerate. At this point we've got around two and a half miles to go to our next stop. So this is a line that in real life um, I only travelled for the first time last weekend, in fact on Saturday, and I have to say that it was a beautiful sunny day and it's really quite spectacular travelling along here, the scenery is quite amazing, and if you've not had a chance to travel this line before then I certainly recommend giving it a chance um, if you are able to do so. So at the overbridge coming up just here we've got around one and two thirds of a mile to go. So now reducing the power as we've reached 70 miles per hour and we need to go between notches 1 and 2 of power to try and maintain the speed. signal just coming up we've got around one mile to go and at this point I'm now going to um, idle the power and just allow the train to coast. Coming up on a warning for an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction which comes into force after our next stop. I'm going to apply the brakes now for Maidstone Barracks just as we've reached the overbridge there immediately after the 30 mile per hour speed warning. And I've made a step 2 brake application. At Maidstone Barracks I need to aim to stop at the 3 coach stop sign which is around halfway along the platform. This should be about the right place to stop.
departing away from Maidstone Barracks. The speed limit is currently 70 miles per hour, though it is very quickly dropping to 30 miles per hour. And we've got around half a mile to go to our next stop, which is Maidstone West. I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast at just above 35 miles per hour. And now I'm just going to look out for the upcoming 30 mile per hour speed post and brake to ensure that we are down below 30 in time for passing the speed post. And then the platform at Maidstone West Station will be coming up immediately afterwards. So I'm just going to continue braking here. Here at Maidstone West Station, I need to aim to stop at the three-car stop sign, which is at the end of the roof on the left-hand side here. the right place to stop. Departing away from Maidstone West, the speed limit is currently 30 miles per hour, with around one and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is East Farley. Now we've reached 30 miles per hour, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast along here until we're able to accelerate further. In a moment, the speed limit will be going up to 45 miles per hour. past the 45 mile per hour speed post and I can accelerate up towards that just on this point here. So I can now accelerate up to the 45 mile per hour speed limit and the speed limit is going up further in a moment back up to 70 miles per hour at this speed post just here. So at the 70 mile per hour speed post we've got around one and a quarter miles to go to East Farley Station. I'm going to shut off the power in a moment as we reach the next signal, which is a distance signal, as at this point we've now got around three quarters of a mile to go to our stop. AWS there is warning us of an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction which comes into force immediately before entering the platform at East Farley Station. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop uh, shortly after the next signal has just come into view. down just a little bit too early here so I've just reduced the braking as we get down to around 25 miles per hour I'm now just going to release the brakes momentarily so here at East Farley Station I'm aiming to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform should be about the right place to stop. Mm. 
departing away from East Farley, the starting speed limit is currently 40 miles per hour, with around 3 miles to go to our next stop, which is Wateringbury. Now just idle the power temporarily at 40 miles per hour to ensure we don't break the speed limit. Now the speed limit here is going up further to 55 miles per hour. At the 55 mile per hour speed post there, we had around two and three quarter miles to go. Now we've reached 55 miles per hour, I just need to go between idle and notch one of power to maintain the speed uh, at around 55. So I'm currently in notch one and I'm just going to idle for a moment just to lose maybe one mile per hour of speed. And I'm going to go back up to notch one of power to hold us at uh, around 55. At the signal that we've just passed there, which is a distant signal, we had just over two miles to go. this signal just here we've now got around one and a quarter miles to go Upcoming signal, we've then got around half a mile to go, and at that point I'm going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. I'm just going to try and look out on the track ahead as we're going to see some sort of chimneys come up in the distance, and then we're going to see a left-hand curve approaching. And once we um, can see the left-hand curve approaching ahead, and then going to apply the brakes for Wateringbury, Wateringbury Station, so it's a bit of a mouthful there to say, um, and so I'm just looking out now, and I believe I can see the curve ahead there. So now I'm just going to apply the brakes here. Wateringbury Station is in fact a staggered platform, so the platform on the right-hand side appears first before the platform on this side. And so it can fool you for a moment to think that you're actually coming in a bit fast when you're coming in at a good speed. Here at Wateringbury, I need to aim to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. So this should be just about the right place to stop. Thank you. 
Departing away from water and grief, for some reason the CCTV screen seemed to have um, become stuck on, I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Um, the speed limit is currently 55 miles per hour, with around one and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Yolding. just past the first whistle board after watering Bree Station. As we reach the second whistle board, then at that point we've got around one mile to go to our stop. Once again, now reaching 55 miles per hour, um, I need to go between idle and notch one of power to try and maintain the speed. We've now got a warning for an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction which comes into force just before our stop at Yolding. And so at this point I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment as we enter this next right hand curve, just as I see the next uh, whistle board which is actually on this right hand curve. So I can just see the whistle board now. And so now I've got the brakes on to slow us down in time for the upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction. Uh, break just slightly too early here. I just caught the horn um, control there as well and I didn't quite intend to. And so here is Yolding Station. Here I need to stop at the S sign which is at the end of the platform. So this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Yolding, the speed limit is currently 30 miles per hour, though as you can see it is immediately going up here to 70 miles per hour, with around one and two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Beltring. this signal here, which is a distant signal, we've now got around one and a third miles to go. Now coming up on East Peckham sidings on the right hand side there, so you just saw the junction off. At this point I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at Beltring uh, just before the next signal. So we've now got a warning there for an upcoming speed restriction of 50 miles per hour, which comes into force after our stop here at Beltring Station. Here at Beltring, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform.
and so this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Beltring, the speed limit is currently 70 miles per hour, though it will soon be dropping down to 50 miles per hour, with around one and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Paddock Wood. I'm just going to continue accelerating along here for a moment until we reach a Morpeth board warning for an upcoming 35 mile per hour speed restriction, which you can see is just coming up here. And so now at this point, I'm going to idle the power and I'm going to uh, brake for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction just approaching this signal here. I'm only doing a couple of miles an hour over 50, so just a quick step one brake application brought us down to 50 miles per hour in time. Just going to allow the train to coast along here for a moment. We've got a quarter of a mile to the upcoming 35 mile per hour speed limit uh, once we pass this uh, whistle board just coming up. I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming limit as we approach the next overbridge. making a gentle step one brake application which should bring our speed down quite nicely. I'm now just going to allow the train to coast at 35 miles per hour. The speed limit will soon be dropping down to 25 miles per hour and that's going to come into force shortly after we've passed this signal here. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast for a moment and then I will apply the brakes just a few seconds after passing the signal. So now coming into Paddock Wood Station, uh, the three car stop marker is on the right hand side so it's actually quite difficult to gauge the exact stopping point here, but I do need to stop just before the roof on the right hand side disappears. I think I've just gone slightly over there as the roof has in fact just disappeared. Um, this is fairly close to the right place to stop. Departing away from Paddock Wood, the speed limit is currently 40 miles per hour, with around five and a quarter miles to go to our next and final stop, which is Tunbridge. So at this point we're now joining the South Eastern Main Line, and we're actually heading in a northerly direction towards London. As I say northerly, it's more of a sort of northwesterly direction. So the speed limit here is going to remain 40 miles per hour just until we've crossed over onto the upline here. And then as soon as we have crossed over onto the upline, the speed limit is now 100 miles per hour. So I can now start accelerating up towards that. I don't think we're going to be able to get up to 100 miles per hour, unfortunately, before I've got to start slowing down for Tunbridge Station.
section of track that we're actually on here. Um, used to see Eurostar services when they were first launched uh, between France and the UK. That's before High Speed 1 was built. And it's also a very long dead straight section of track that runs pretty much all of the way from Tunbridge down to Ashford International. I think it's something like 20 miles of dead straight track. We are currently on a climbing grade here, not that steep, but it is affecting our ability to accelerate. As you can see, we've got to just over 80 miles per hour at this point. I think we might be able to just about push 90 before I've got to start thinking about braking. currently have a double yellow signal just ahead which uh, means that the signal guarding Tunbridge station is currently displaying a red aspect so just break very slightly for a moment uh, it's just a way of acknowledging that I've got a double yellow signal and then I release the brakes I'm just going to allow the train to coast along here I can now see that the next signal ahead is still displaying a yellow aspect but I'm not sure if it's double or single there's quite a bit of spacing between the signals here in fact, that is a single yellow aspect, so I am now going to start braking for the upcoming red signal. And of course, I must assume that the next signal is displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. So I've currently just got a step one brake application that I will increase in a moment if necessary as we get closer to the signal ahead. And now see that the signal ahead is displaying a red aspect so I'm just bringing our speed down a bit more um, for some reason with with creating this scenario it's in fact the case that this signal is stuck at red and I've got to request permission to pass the signal so I'm just going to uh, slow down and treat this as if it were a red signal in reality and then press tab just to request permission to pass the signal and enter Tombridge station stopping nicely just in front of the signal here and now if I press tab I've now got permission to pass the signal and indeed you can see that we've got the two white lights on the signal which I believe is indicating a call on signal which would normally mean that the platform ahead is occupied however there are no trains in the platform ahead there in fact is a train scheduled to be in the platform ahead in reality but when I put that in in the scenario creator, um, unfortunately I was unable to pass this signal. It was stuck at danger and would not give me permission to pass it. So that train that would have been static at Tunbridge in the platform that I'm entering is now going to be in the platform immediately to the right hand side. So the speed limit here is now 25 miles per hour, so I'm not accelerating above that. I'm just going to allow the train to coast now that I've reached 25 miles per hour. The line joining us from the left here is the line from Hastings, which I have actually covered in a different video on the excellent freeware route available from backdated train sim where I did a journey from Tunbridge down through to Hastings. 
important. So we're now entering Tunbridge platform here. I do need to stop uh, just a little bit before the roof disappears on the right hand side. Once again, it's very difficult to judge the correct stopping position um, due to the fact that the stopping marker is so far away from me on the right hand side here. If I come to a stop around here, this should hopefully be about the right place to stop. And so here we are, arrival at Tunbridge. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And for the latest channel updates, then please don't forget to follow me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. Once again, thank you for watching.